everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for, for being here to listen to me today. So my name is Maria Pereira. I'm Chief Innovation Officer um, at Gecko Biomedical. And I'm here today to speak to you about my journey, about my journey in helping to bring a new technology, a new medical technology from the bench to the bedside, and also to tell you the journey of Gecko Biomedical, a startup uh, based here in Paris that has been able to bring this concept to a commercial product stage, and also uh, that has been, over the last years, able to transform this technology on a platform, uh, on, a plat on a platform of innovation, and also um, to build a pipeline of products to help patients. And so my journey started with this email. So I was a PhD student uh, in the laboratory of Professor Jeff Karp um, at the Brigham and Women's Hospital at Harvard Medical School. And at the time when I was starting my PhD, he received this email from Dr. Pedro Del, Pedro Del Nido. So Dr. Pedro Del Nido is the chief of cardiac surgery at the Boston Children's Hospital. So basically, he treats very young babies with very different pathologies on the heart. At the time, he approached Jeff with basically a challenge. Are you willing to help us develop new solutions to close defects inside baby hearts? So basically, ventricular septal defects are small holes between, between the chambers of the heart that need to be basically closed, repaired, to allow normal blood circulation. Today, the current solutions that clinicians like Dr. Pedro Dalindo have is to basically suture these defects in highly invasive procedures, or they can also use bulky metallic devices that can be applied minimally invasive inside the heart but since they are metallic, they basically they can induce damage on the heart because they are quite stiff. And also, they are also not biodegradable. So you can imagine that when the child is growing, very often these, these devices need to be replaced uh, for bigger devices to be able to keep these defects closed while allowing the, the heart basically to grow on the patient. So we simply started to brainstorm and we started to imagine what if we could simply close these defects using a glue. The problem is that if you look to the market, there are several medical, there are different medical glues available uh, for clinicians, but they suffer from basically two or three key problems. One of them, for a specific class of materials of adhesives used in the clinics, they are very biocompatible, but they don't adhere well enough to the tissue to be able to, clo to close such defects in such a challenging environment, such as the beating heart, where we have basically an hurricane of blood inside the heart flowing, and uh, you have a very dynamic environment. On the other hand, you have other classes of materials uh, which adhere very strongly to the heart, but they are, not, they are not biocompatible. So you cannot use them. Basically, they are not approved for use inside the human body. Also, a problem for both, for any class of the existing adhesives in the market, is that once basically you, you mix two components together and you deliver to the inside of the heart or to another tissue, they immediately start to polymerize by themselves, meaning that the surgeon has very little control to basically deliver the adhesive inside the heart through a minimally invasive approach and uh, only activate it, only make it adhere when he or she wants. So the way we started approaching this problem, we had a, this clinical problem, how can we close ventricular septal defects, how can we close holes inside the chambers of the heart? And we had to come up with a solution on how to do this. So basically, the way we started to, to work on this problem, we start to brainstorm what are the key features, what are the key properties we need to have on these materials for them to be able to work. So on one hand, we wanted to make sure we had the material and adhesive that was resistant to wash out, meaning that you could apply it inside the heart and it will not be simply washed away through the blood. The second key feature that we wanted to have was to have on-demand adhesion, meaning that the clinician could apply, the surgeon could apply the material through a minimally invasive approach, and only when he wants, activate the adhesion and stick the material to the heart. Of course, we also wanted the material to be biocompatible and biodegradable. So when the, basically the child is growing, the material degrades and can be replaced by native body tissue. And also an important feature, and this will become more important later on my presentation, we also wanted something that could be programmable, something that we could tune the properties to match the 
the mechanical properties, the, the, the compliance with different tissues inside the body. So the way we approached this problem was to look to nature. So we started to look to creatures on the land and on the sea that have been able to basically develop solutions to adhere in very, very challenging surfaces, um, wet surfaces, basically. And the way we looked to this problem was try to look what are the key microscopic properties that these, basically, these creatures have developed to adhere on wet environments. On one hand, uh, this, basically, they, they, many of these creatures, they do produce secretions that are highly viscous. So they are not easily washed away by, by water. On the second hand, um, th these secretions are also quite hydrophobic, meaning that they will not be simply uh, solubilized in fluids. So based on these mic microscopic properties, we started to design our own material, our own adhesive to, to solve these needs. So the way we did this was to develop basically a new polymer, uh, a new material that is highly viscous, uh, that you can spread on a surface even underwater, and that, very importantly, to promote adhesion, basically we make this viscous liquid to go from the liquid state to the solid state through a very simple stimuli of light. So the light is very important for us because it's what allows us to control uh, the adhesion. So the surgeon can deploy the material inside the heart, it can activate the, the adhesion, for example, through a simple optic fiber, a simple LED, and then the material will be solid, will adhere to the heart, and, um, and it will then biodegrade over time. So we have, this work was being done in, a, in an academic set, setting, and of course, after all the optimization of the chemistry, we were able to test in animals uh, basically the effectiveness of our material. So this basically is a, uh, an echocardiography of uh, a pig heart, where we have applied a patch um, inside the heart to basically close these defects, uh, and we have followed the animal over a period of time. So on the second video I'm showing here, very likely is more like my heart is beating right now. Basically, we simulate the animal with adrenaline, uh, to induce uh, a high, higher beating rate and uh, show that the addition of our material was strong enough to remain inside the heart, even in a very dynamic environment such as a, stress, a stressed heart. So looking back to that, this journey uh, while I was a student, if I look back on what was really critical to be able to develop this technology and bring this innovation until animal testing, it was really about the very highly multidisciplinary team that was involved in this project. We had a group of clinicians that helped us to frame and define the clinical problem. We had a group of engineers that helped us to develop all the tools to be able to deliver our polymer inside the heart. And we had an amazing group of chemists and material scientists to really help us design this formulation and address the key design criteria uh, to basically bring a solution that could be efficient. So, and what about what's next? So while I was finishing my PhD, um, I was also lucky enough to meet other amazing people. So at the time also my PhD advisor um, basically introduced me to, uh, to two outstanding French entrepreneurs that basically uh, started to, the, to, to define what would later become the vision of Gecko Biomedical, the startup I currently work with. And so basically the way we saw the vision for the company um, is that if you look to wound closure techniques that are used in surgery today, basically stitching is very likely one of the oldest medical technologies uh, available or tools for surgery, and it has not been disrupted over the many, many centuries. So if you look to stitching, um, it, it has different challenges. First, it can induce tissue damage, especially if you are thinking about, let's say, for example, disease tissues, as, such as in when there's a cancer on the tissue, these tissues are extremely friable and they are very difficult to suture. They're also very technically challenging. Most of the surgeries are evolving towards minimally invasive procedures. And it's very difficult to apply sutures and to have dexterity to apply proper sutures in a minimally invasive setting. They're also very time consuming. If you, if you look to some surgeries, most of the time of the surgery is spent on stitching and not exactly on treating the patient. So, the vision and that the company started to develop, what if we could simply replace stitches by a, bi by a, to a, by a biodegradable adhesive uh, that could be effective in wound repair inside the body? And this is what gave rise, it was this vision that gave rise to Gecko Biomedical. 
So if you think about surgery, you can think there's many different problems uh, that we could tackle with our technology. You can go from gastrointestinal surgery, vascular, lung. There's a range of procedures we could go after and that we could tackle. But as, with ever, as in every startup, it's also very important to have a process to innovate, to know how to go from a concept to, to basically a product uh, in a very cost-effective manner to be able to tackle as many problems as you can uh, without simply losing your focus. So the way we have been designing our pipeline of products is basically considering this approach. How can we be systematic innovating and bringing new solutions to patients uh, and to tackle as many problems as, as we can in the most efficient manner possible? So if you look to our technology, if you look to think about that, basically our technology is not just about the adhesive. It's basically a combination of different components. It's our polymer formulation. It's our de uh, the delivery devices that are used to deliver our adhesive inside the body. And also uh, the activation technology, basically the, the how can we deliver light inside the body um, through to, to, to basically activate our polymers inside. And so it's by combining these components uh, that we can develop new products. And just to give you an example, um, we have had the company start in 2013 and we have been able to have regulatory approval for our first product, which is a vascular sealant, back in 2017. So, and the way uh, we approach our technology is basically by having this modularity in our platform that basically we are able to combine a specific form of formulation for a specific tissue with a specific deliver device and with a specific light source. And we are able to interchange these modules in between different applications to make sure we answer the critical requirements for the clinician in a specific surgery. So going a little bit more detail, we have modularity in our technology at the level of the key product components, the polymer, the device, and the light. But we all have also modularity at the level of our polymer formula formulation. So one of the things we are able to do is that using the same base chemistry, we are basically to play with key components in our polymer to be able to reach different properties. And reaching different properties is very important because, for example, if you want to fix bone, it's very dif dif different than if you want to fix, for example, a nerve. In terms of mechanical properties, in terms of adhesion strength, the requirements are completely different. So if you look to our polymer, basically our polymer is, let's say, has three key modules. There's, what we, there's the glycerol, there's the sebastic acid, and there's the acrylate that give uh, the, basically the photo, uh, the photo activation properties to our material. And it's basically by playing with these three different components and playing on different ratios that we are able to design different materials that can tackle different clinical needs. The same way in the strategy of application of the polymers. So we are able to spray our material. If, for example, we want to cover a large surface area, we can apply our material inside vessel using a, also a different, a different device. Or even if you want to go minimally invasive surgery, we are able to design tools that can address that, that need. And it's so it's by, by playing with the modularity of the technology, by being very lean on how we, we bring these building blocks together so that we don't need to basically reinvent the wheel every time we have a new idea and we want to get to a new product, that you are able to basically have a sustainable business model that allows us to, to design different, uh, different products. And this is a key difference from of Gecko Biomedical compared with other med medtech companies, that normally medtech companies are one company, one product, and here we are looking to, to basically to scale, leveraging all the economies of learning, all the economies of scale that we can have from one clinical indication to the other one. We want to be able to, 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 to scale and to, pr to, ba to be basically be a company that can bring different solutions to the market in the most cost-effective manner possible. So uh, that's exactly what we are trying to do. We are trying to promote an, uh, an, an ecosystem of innovation. Uh, and when I see, say innovation, it's not only innovation at the level of the product. It's also how we design processes inside the company, how we, how we digitalize our operations, how we build our quality systems, and how we basically we have been able to establish our manuf own manufacturing capabilities in-house to be able to go from an idea to a product in a very fast and cost-effective manner. So, and if you look, if you ask me what have been my key lessons 
uh, throughout this journey uh, from bringing, from starting in the lab with just a simple idea to basically now working on a company that has been able to bring a product to the market and it's looking to expand in very different indications. So what I've learned is that innovation is as much about creativity than it is about discipline. So if you want to be able to scale, if you want to be able to bring, to basically disrupt on your business model and be able to bring on an effective manner different solutions to the market, you need to consider not only about the solution. You need to think about how can you build that solution, for example, leveraging modularity of your technology or leveraging um, economies of scale so that you can do this in a cost-effective manner uh, without basically just losing your focus throughout the process. So thank you very much, and I'll be around if you have any questions. Thank you.